космическая дорожка начнется, доложенная вашим разумом и вашим There is historic news from behind the Iron Curtain. Man has traversed the reaches of outer space, and that man is a communist. Soviet pilot Yuri Gagarin in the spacecraft Vostok 1 successfully lifted off the face of the Earth, flew his craft around the globe in approximately 90 minutes, and landed safely in the Soviet Union. As with the flight of Sputnik four years ago, this latest Russian achievement has caught those in the American space program by surprise. The seven American astronauts of the Mercury space program suddenly find themselves jockeying for second place. It has been reported that either Gus Grissom, John Glenn, or Alan B. Shepard will be the first to fly the one-man Mercury space capsule. Just when the flight will take place has been the subject of much speculation. Tonight, President Kennedy is meeting with officials of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration to discuss not just why we are losing the space race, but perhaps if it has already been lost. The Russian went into orbit. One orbit, yes. You can't even match that. Not yet. Gentlemen, the President has been keeping up with your hearings before Congress, of the committees, for purposes of tonight's meeting, we can dispense with all the small talk. He will want to know how we can catch the Russians, or better yet, leapfrog them. We can put a man on the moon before the Russians. How about that? It will take a concerted national effort, something along the lines of the Manhattan Project. How much will it cost? Somewhere between uh, 10 and 20 billion dollars. Pumping that much cash into the private sector could be very popular. He's going to ask if there's anything we can do for less of the taxpayers' dollars. What if we put up a space laboratory of some kind? They'll beat us. If we get into a race with them over heavy lifting capabilities, which is all that putting up a space station will demonstrate, we're going to lose for at least the next five years. Hugh, were you as sure about this when you were working under Eisenhower? No, but the Soviets hadn't put a man in space then. Most assuredly. The moon is their ultimate objective. Red moon, huh? Who wants that hanging over our heads? As head of the president's science advisory, I've got to tell him that politics aside, there's no reason to put a man on the moon. The only thing we'll get for our money are some rocks. So I'll put a probe up, scoop some out, bring them back, and tour the world with them for propaganda purposes. You don't need to send a man a quarter of a million miles away to do that. And it sure as hell won't cost $20 billion. Well, certainly the president realizes that the moment a man steps on the moon will be a definitive one in the history of the world. Especially when he sticks old glory in it and salutes. He's ready for us. Can the president count on anything in the immediate future? Yes. <clears throat> second of May. We'll have an American up on the second of May. GRO, command carrier on. Roger, GC, command carrier on. Say, GC, turn up GSC to left. Transmitters, but separate.